presentation on Twitter. My name is Max Beller, and we'll get started. So as you can see at the start here, this is kind of cool. Um, we'll get into it later, but like it's from it's chronological in the order of like, the Twitter logos there. So quick question at the start, like do any of you guys recognize like these logos at all? Kinda. That's kinda, but like did anybody ever even see this one? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I didn't either, so I thought it was kind of interesting. So who all here has Twitter? I'm guessing like pretty much everybody. Except Sam. Okay. <laughs> Um, for all of you, would you mostly rank it in your top five or like even like the top social media app that you use for yeah. the most part? Yeah, it's kind of, that's kind of what I can see too. So to get into an overview of what we'll talk about, we'll talk about the early beginnings of the app, the changes in the current state of it, its impact on the users that use it and the world around it, pros and cons of it, and then some final thoughts. So right there, um, Jack Dorsey, we'll talk about that in a second. You've probably seen that before. That was the first ever tweet sent on March 21st, 2006. So to kind of explain who Jack Dorsey and the rest of the crew, oh sorry, to explain who Jack Dorsey are and the, type, the rest of the crew, um, from left to right, that is Noah Glass, Evan Williams, Biz Stone, which is like the best name I've ever heard, <laughs> and Jack Dorsey. So basically, these guys are all former Google employees, and in the early 2000s, they all kind of got tired of working for Google and stuff, because this is back before social media was social media and stuff, so it was kind of a different thing working for Google compared to the videos we see now. So they got out and they started up an app called Odeo, which was basically a podcasting app before podcasts were even really a thing. And as they moved along the early 2000s and stuff like that, they kept trying to move Odeo forward and stuff like that. And then, um, according to Carlson, which is an article with Business Insider, in 2005, uh, Mind My Language, he said basically the shit hit the fan when Apple came out with like the iPod Touch and the podcasting stuff that that happened. And it was like all of a sudden Odeo had hundreds of millions of competitors to deal with that were getting it in a way easier form than downloading a day through a home computer and everything to use. So they dropped, they dropped out of the data very quickly and Jack Dorsey, the guy on the far right, came up with the idea for an app that was based around status updates, kind of similar to MySpace. But what he wanted to do was make it sort of like a MySpace light and make it more fast and speedier and stuff like that. That's how he actually came up with the name Twitter, which kind of makes sense because like birds chirp real quick and it's quick bits of info and stuff like that. So that's how Twitter kind of got its start. So we can see the business statement of Twitter here is to give everyone the power to create and share ideas and information instantly without barriers, kind of again, quick. Our business and revenue will always follow that mission in ways that improve and do not distract from a free and global conversation. So the launch of Twitter happened in the end of March in 2006, and uh, basically it was all running off of Dorsey's laptop, which is kind of interesting, because I mean, think of like the amount of stuff that Twitter does now, and like the mainframe computers and everything. It was literally running off his like thick like Mac computer that was probably like that big back in 2006. So that's kind of interesting fact. Um, it got a chance to show itself off really early. In August of 2006, an earthquake hit San Francisco, which was really, it's, it's a terrible thing that it was an earthquake, but it was really convenient for Twitter because it was based around San Francisco and a lot of people in that area were already starting to use it as a communication device. And it showed its ability to quickly communicate things with people and get information <coughs> on and stuff like that. And this is kind of a funny comic strip related to that. Like, there's an earthquake and the guy's like, oh crap, there's an earthquake. And these people see it on Twitter, but they're too busy looking at it on Twitter to actually do anything and stuff, so they like show up in there too. But it's kind of seeing what Twitter can do for people and stuff like that. Versus where back at the time, Facebook and stuff like that was more so long posted, long winded stuff and more thought out discussion posts and stuff like that versus where Twitter kind of came in. It was, at this point it was still using like the texting language and like R was just the letter R, not A-R-E and stuff like that as well. So some updates have occurred along the way, obviously. Um, the original character cap has been increased from 140 to 280. I mean, we all remember trying to fit stupid stuff into tweets at 140 when we were younger. Uh, there's different forms of media also added on to the tweets now, like pictures, GIFs or GIFs, we can get into that argument too. Hashtags, at signs, stuff like that too. Um, there's also a Discover page now with trends via those hashtags. Um, huge, huge marketing and business advertising abilities now. And all in all, it's just, all coming in to make this the most efficient way of communication and news source and stuff like that. That's all according to Encyclopedia Britannica. So this is kind of a video that sums it up way better than I can probably do. Um, Maybe 
the look out for the word. So you've heard of tweets, hashtags, and trends, but what is Twitter really? Well, Twitter is the fastest way to get real-time information from around the world. It's much like a newspaper that automatically updates as news stories occur. Tweets themselves are short and sweet, like newspaper headlines. But unlike a newspaper, you choose what articles appear by following accounts that interest you. Just click follow. Let's say you're watching sports on TV. Using Twitter can give you a whole new perspective on the game. By following athletes, journalists, or people behind the scenes, you can get perspectives and access that you can't find anywhere else. And the same is true for politics, news, music, and even your friends and family. And you don't have to read everything that gets tweeted. You just check your timeline when it's convenient, like while commuting or waiting in line. In just a few seconds, Twitter can get you up to speed on everything that's happening. Whether you like books, bicycling, or the ballet, Twitter brings you closer in real time to what matters most. All you have to do is go online or grab your phone and sign up. Happy tweeting! So I thought that was a really interesting way to explain Twitter because when I was talking to my mom about it the other day because she's recently got social medias and stuff now and she replies to everything I put up and everything's annoying on and stuff, but it's funny. But that's kind of the way she described Twitter was that she uses it now as sort of her news news source for like world news and stuff like that. She still gets like the daily newspaper and stuff like that, but for news articles and world stuff on the stage of that stuff, he's, she's mostly going to Twitter now rather than watching TV and stuff because like they said, it's very specified to what she wants when she wants it. So what does it all look like? This is from the desktop version, which was actually really cool to go look at because I haven't done that from the actual desktop versus looking at my phone in a long time, but it's a good way to describe Twitter because it shows everything that's around at the right time. So as you can see, it has just basically your post bar at the top, um, your tweets and what you follow, like it's a, I play guitar and stuff, so it gives me guitar and stuff, how to tweet up and stuff like that, and then the hashtags to kind of direct you towards that. It's a good, and there's a good example of kind of what goes on on Twitter and stuff like that, like going back to the news feed and stuff like that, like the Antifa stuff going on right now. Um, it also works directly towards you with these trends and stuff too now, because obviously like sports and stuff, there was a soccer game on yesterday and stuff, so it was directed that towards me and stuff like that, and celebrity stuff. So that's kind of an overview of what it looks like. I'm at Max underscore fellow too, if you want to see tweets about sports and whatever I talk about. So the big thing related to this that find, I found really interesting is the ability for business to market, because marketing is my major and stuff like that. I won't bore you with it, I know. I'm like one of the only marketing majors here, so I know you don't want to hear me blab about it. But it's been a huge sort of just explosion into the marketing world, and it's changed the game completely because of sponsored ads and hashtags and stuff like that, and ad campaigns through that, because if you're able to literally reach the customers with ads that you want them to see when you see it. And that's just like a marketer's dream, because for Miller Lite, like, Miller Lite's my favorite beer. They probably can find that through cookies because I've probably been on stuff related to Miller Lite before. Say I buy like a Miller Lite hat. They can find that through cookies, through databases. Go into Twitter, search that, find out, oh, this guy who's a 21-year-old and likes Miller Lite, let's put a Miller Lite ad on his timeline. And I guarantee you've had experiences like that of, oh crap, I shopped for this on Amazon today. And that was an ad on my Twitter timeline for it and stuff like that. So you kind of see how great that is for the marketing world. Um, there's also a great new avenue for customer service and PR. Uh, I know we've talked about it a lot in this class and stuff like that, but now people, you, the amount of airline Twitter people that have to deal with comp customer complaints has to be like the worst job in the world because of stuff like that. But it's also great for the PR of that because of the quick response times and resolutions and stuff like that. Um, and like you said, just the overall accessibility that this offers for businesses to the public is just incredible through the app. So some overall pros and cons. Like we talked about, the overall accessibility to the world for the app is huge. It's the quickest way to get news and social media around the world. It works both ways for both incoming and outgoing stuff. So just as soon as I can see that somebody in China did something, they can see that I did something if the timing's right and they get the retweet that I got and stuff like that. Um, and like we said, the business and marketing PR degree. Um, the cons, there is some some issues with immaturity and general misbehavior on the app and stuff like that, but you're gonna get that with every social media. Um, we also have the issues of misinformation, and like the whole fake news scandals and stuff going around like that. And with that being said, hackers and bots are a lot of, are a lot of the issues on Twitter. Um, Fisher from EngageNet.com said, said that just recently with the whole Hong Kong demonstrations and stuff going on right now, Twitter just this month, I think it was 
completely banned 2,000 accounts just from this month for all the Hong Kong stuff and misinformation and lies we talk about that and stuff. So in conclusion, Twitter's a really awesome app. I'm, it's one of the apps that I actually don't mind using. You know, I usually find myself scrolling through Instagram and think like, why am I even on here? I really don't care about selfies or something. But Twitter is something you can use in a very useful way and stuff like that, even no matter the demographic, no matter the age. So I think it's a very interesting app. And you guys have any questions? Cool. Well done. Thanks, guys.